Well, hey, it's Catherine from CatherinePooler.com. In this video, we're going to use the giant butterfly stamp from the Wings of Joy stamp set, along with some little flower accents. We're going to create five cards. When you have a stamp set that has a whole lot of coordinating stamps in one set, there are lots of design possibilities and way to use, ways to use the stamps in conjunction with each other. But when you have a stamp set that has a really large image, just like this one, you may think there's only one or two ways to use that stamp. Stamp it on cardstock and you're done, right? Well, no, there are lots of creative ways to use stamps like this. For this first card, I used my Misty stamping tool and then I'm cleaning my stamp with the scrubber, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. But I just added a simple thanks die in the middle, mounted it to a card front. And that is one really simple way to use this awesome giant butterfly stamp. Have you ever inked a stamp and noticed some splotchiness on the stamp? Well, if you stamp right onto your cardstock, you're going to get a splotchy image. So even before you put that stamp to paper, make sure you get a good solid inking of that stamp and clear stamps like this make it really easy to do so. The picket fence scrubber that I was using at the beginning of the video, I, this is a new product and I absolutely love it. I just leave it in a clear plate on the side of my desk and you just put a little bit of water on there, just spray it with one of your spritzers and you just wipe your stamps down with it. And it has a little bit of texture to it so that if there's any bubbling on your stamps, once I clean it off with the scrubber, it usually takes care of it. So I highly recommend the scrubber. It's a really great tool. And another great tool that I recommend for getting good results with stamping is the Misty stamping tool. So you put your paper in the corner there, you put your stamp on top of it and then pick it up with the door. And then you can stamp it over and over and over and your stamped image will go in the same exact place every single time and you could do fun ink blending techniques like this do you see how gorgeous that looks oh i love it i am using our mini ink pads on this we have full size ink pads and we also have sets of mini ink pads they are one inch by two inch rectangles and they're really convenient and a great way to get your feet wet with a whole bunch of colors so i'm using be mine Tiara, Aquatini, and one way to get a nice blend between different ink colors like this is to use a life-changing brush or one of these blending brushes to kind of dab the ink and blend it on the stamp. And you're going to get a beautiful blend when you do that. So I'm just going back and forth several times, uh, inking and stamping until I get a look that I really love. And going back to the first card, I didn't get to talk about the fact that this giant butterfly stamp set, it's called Wings of Joy, comes with small little flower stamps. So they're taken right from the wings and you can stamp and die cut them and then you can pop them right up on top of the, the large butterfly stamp for added dimension and fun. So that's a great way to use this set. And you can see that I got a little bit of cross-contamination from my Aquatini ink pad to my tiara when I was inking, but that's really easy to take care of. Just take a clean paper towel, wipe off your ink pad, and have the ink refills on hand so that you can re-ink your ink pad and it'll be good as new. So here is a look at the first two cards I made. Which one is your favorite? Do you like the pink with the popped up flirty fuchsia flowers? Or do you love the ink blended butterfly? And I gave you a peek at another butterfly that I did with the same color combination. This is kind of like snowflakes or a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And all, all of them are going to look different when you do ink blending techniques like this. For the next card, we're going to do some embossing techniques. So we're going to use the Wow Embossing Pad, ink it up, and stamp it on cardstock. Especially with embossing ink, I like to stamp it multiple times to make sure I get a really good solid inking and that the embossing ink is heavy and it will hold on to the embossing powder really well. So I added white embossing powder here and I'm just going to heat it and you can see as the powder turns shiny that's when you can tell it's done and just heat the whole thing and then oh ready for this this is called emboss resist and this is my all 
all-time favorite technique. So I'm using the little life-changing brushes and I'm just dipping it into the ink pad and then sponging or blending, ink blending right over the top of my embossed image. I did go straight from that Something Borrowed ink pad to the Flirty Fuchsia. I didn't really worry too much about cross-contamination for a couple reasons. One, because blue and red make purple, so I wasn't worried about adding Something Borrowed to Flirty Fuchsia. And they're about the same um, dark, you know, shade from light to dark. So I didn't worry too much about cross-contamination there. And then when you blend the inks together, you get a whole nother color from them being blended. So make sure you have a paper towel on hand to wipe down your image because some of the ink will be on the white embossing powder or the white embossed image. And then just wipe it down to remove that excess ink. And then I'm going to die cut it with the large butterfly wings of joy die cut and I'm going to add that to a card. But first I wanted to play with my painted stripes background stamp. So this is a stamp that coordinates with the butterfly. We took the stripes from the bottom wing, the bottom wings of the butterfly and pop them onto a six by six background stamp. We did a six by six so that you have the option of stamping your stripes um, vertically or horizontally on your card. So I'm stamping them with something borrowed and then be without re-inking, I moved my cardstock over ever so slightly and stamped again. And so then I get a double stripe with one stripe lighter than the other. And then I'm gonna turn my cardstock and ink up the stamp with Flirty Fuchsia. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I stamp once, and then move the cardstock over slightly and stamp again. And I get a really fun plaid. So then I wanted to make another one just for fun and I only stamped once. So I stamped something borrowed ink, I turned it and I stamped Flirty Fuchsia. So which one is your favorite? I don't know, I like them both, but I just took a very little piece, a little smidge there, added it to the bottom of a card front and added my ink blended butterfly over on top of a white, card layer, little sentiment, pop that up and you're done with that one. For the next card, I'm gonna do the emboss resist technique again. So I'm stamping the butterfly at the top of the card at an angle with the wow embossing ink. And then I'm gonna move the butterfly and stamp it a second time at the bottom of the cardstock, angled the other way, and then cover it with your white embossing powder and heat. So for this inking technique, I'm going to bring, bring out my mini ink pads again. When doing direct to paper like this, I'm going to do stripes. So the mini ink pads are a great tool to use with this technique because you get a thin stripe. With the full size ink pads, you're not going to be able to get this nice of a stripe unless you do the masking technique, which is another fun technique to do as well. But this one is really quick and easy. And when doing a technique like this, you're going to notice my tiara ink pad in the bottom left hand side of the screen got a little bit of aquatini on there again. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'll just clean it off later, re ink it, and I'll be all set. So Be Mine, Flirty Fuchsia, Aquatini, and Tiara, a great, vibrant, bright color palette. What color palette would you use for a card like this? If you need color combo inspiration, head over to our shop, shop.katherinepooler.com. Check out all of our patterned paper packs. We have great color combinations in those that are jumping points for all of your card making. Makes it really easy. A lot of times when I have a fabulous technique piece like this, I just like to do a white embossed sentiment on black cardstock, a couple Crater Lake sequins, and you're done. For the final card using this stamp set, we're going to focus on the cute little floral images. So I'm going to use the same color palette, Be Mine, Tiara, Aquatini, Flirty Fuchsia. And I started with the largest flower. I'm stamping that in Be Mine. And I did two on one side, one on the other, and then Tiara in another a little bit smaller flower. And then going down to an even smaller flower, Flirty Fuchsia, just kind of filling in around the other flowers that I've already stamped. And then Aquatini, I thought would be a fun twist for the foliage. So a few leaves in Aquatini. And then a little tiny accent flower I thought would be cute in Midnight. 
I am a personal fan of bright, vibrant colors and patterns with a sprinkling of black. I think it looks really sharp. So a simple, so happy sentiment die cut. And then I took a stamp from the Thoughtful Phrases and it says more than just for you, but I selectively stamped only the for you and added it right under so happy. I think that looks great. So a quick look back at all of the projects that we made. I will have a link to the blog post where I have photos of all of these cards on my blog so that you can get creative and paste any of them that you want, get inspiration from them, and see all of the supplies and everything just um, laid out there for you. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate you jumping in, leaving me comments, subscribe to my channel, and just being here. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. You're inspired and I'll see you again soon.